The following topic is so amazing that I want to get straight to it. And the topic is 30, 60, 90 triangles. Comes up in the GMAT, GRE, and many other tests. And it is a pretty amazing secret. As I've said here, it's a secret ratio that only the professionals know. And you are about to learn it. Here's a diagram. And this is the ratio that we're going to be covering today. And it's not just enough to memorize the ratio. You've got to know how to use it. And that's more importantly what this video is about. Now you can see lots of X's there and lots of numbers, but it's a bit confusing. And that's why I prefer the noughts and crosses layout, three by three grid. This is what I want you to really memorize and use and appreciate. So the side that's opposite the 30 degrees, we label X. Remember, the angles in a triangle add up to 180. So if one of the angles is 90, the other angle is 60, and then the final angle will be 30. And the side that's opposite from the 30, can you see it down at the bottom? It's furthest away from the 30 degrees. We label that X in our box. The side that's opposite the 60 degrees, that's furthest away, not touching the 60 degrees on the left, can you see it? That is X root three. So that goes underneath the 60 in the box. And the side that's opposite the right angle, the 90 degrees, that's furthest away, the hypotenuse, is 2x. Your number one challenge is keeping these numbers in your head. x, x root 3, 2x. They won't be given to you in the exam. You have to know them. Why are these numbers true? It's like an ancient Pythagorean secret to the universe. If you try 1 squared plus root 3 squared, it does equal 2 squared. So that's one of the reasons this works, but it's a secret ancient ratio that we need to know and memorize. Now I know what you're thinking. Okay, I could put it into a box and I could put the 30, 60, 90, and I could put the x underneath the 30, the x root 3 underneath the 60, and the 2x underneath the 90. But how do we actually solve anything? What could they ask us and how would we solve it? And this is what the following few questions will be about. Just to clarify, and I will try and catch you out today, everything I'm about to tell you doesn't just apply to all triangles. Absolutely not. Only those with specifically the following angles, 30, 60, 90 degrees. Okay, so how can they test us? Here's a classic question. If they give us one of the sides of the triangle, the question would be, work out the value of the line AC in the diagram you can see on the left. How do we react to that? First thing to notice is that we have a right angle that's 90 degrees and we have a 30 degree angle, which means the final angle at B must be 60 degrees. That's right. So we can fill in both the 60 degrees on the diagram and our grid that we have memorized. Now remember, it's the side opposite that belongs to the angle. So you see how we have that 16, that length of 16 on the hypotenuse BC. Where would that go in our box? That would go beneath the 2x because that 16 is opposite to the 90 degrees. It's furthest away from, it's opposite, it's not touching the right angle, the 90 degrees. So that's where it goes in the box. Now here's the beauty of the box. We can then make an equation we know 2x equals 16. So we can write out that 16 equals 2x. Solving that, x must be 8. This is how the box works. You fill in the box, solve the equation, and then fill in the rest of the box. If x is 8, we know that x is, of course, 8, so that goes in the 30 column, and 60 is x root 3, so that's 8 root 3. So now we know every single side of that triangle. The question here was the line AC, and that's opposite to which angle? The line AC is opposite to the 60 degree angle, and so its length from the box is eight root three. Now, if you want, you can pause and rewatch that. If it was a lot to take in, you're learning a lot in a short space of time. Or if you think you understood, we'll do another example. There'll be plenty of examples. Right, what about the area of this triangle ABC. Well, again, we have a 90 degrees and a 30 degrees, meaning the remaining angle must be 60 degrees. 
bringing up our box, the 7 is opposite to the 30 degree angle. So the 7 goes beneath the 30 degrees, meaning x must equal 7. This makes it particularly easy to fill out the rest of the box. If x is 7, then 2x is 14, and x root 3 is 7 root 3. So we know all the sides of the triangle. If we know all the sides of the triangle, it shouldn't be too hard to work out the area of the triangle. That's base times height divided by 2. It doesn't matter which one you call the base, which one the height, but the two sides next to the right angle are the base and the height. That's 7, 7 root 3. Those are our base and height, whichever way around you want. The hypotenuse is the 14, that's separate. So base times height divided by 2, that's 49 root 3 divided by 2. This video is of course going to involve some root manipulation. So if you're not confident on roots, check out my other videos. But for now, I'm just going to assume you know how to manipulate roots at a basic level. So the area of this triangle would be 49 root 3 over 2. I can tell that you're really enjoying this 30, 60, 90 triangle topic, so I'm going to step it up a notch. There is one thing they can do to make things particularly hard, and they can give us the side that's opposite to the 60 degrees. That makes things a bit harder. We have to show off our root handling skills to get this right. So again, you can watch my other videos and revise how to handle roots to understand what I'm doing, but the core essence of solving this problem is using the box that we've done in the previous questions. Here it's clearly a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So we bring out our lovely box, which we've memorized, of course, they won't give us this. And the 12, that you can see on the left, is opposite to the 60 degrees. So that goes inside our box. Now we need to create an equation. The x root 3 in that column equals 12, but that's not so easy an equation to solve. It takes a few steps, and you can see these steps down below. If 12 equals x root 3, we could divide both sides by root 3 to find out x. So 12 over root 3 is x. But that's kind of horrible to have the root in the denominator. So what you would do to get rid of that root 3 in the denominator is multiply top and bottom of the fraction by root 3. This is called rationalizing the fraction. Again, if you're not familiar with this, you can either learn it just right now or check out other videos. Anyway, what happens if you multiply top and bottom by root 3 is the top line becomes 12 root 3. That makes sense because we're just timesing it by root 3. And the bottom line becomes 3 because root 3 times root 3, which is like root 3 squared, cancels out the square root and you're just left with 3. Anyway, so you need a bit of essentials in terms of root handling skills to get through 30, 60, 90 triangles, but it's not too bad once you see how it's done. Finally, on the left, you've got the 12 over 3, which is 4. 12 divided by 3 is 4, so we have 4 root 3x. 12 root 3 divided by 3 is 4 root 3x. You don't divide the root 3 by 3 as well. When there's a multiplication, you only divide one of them by the denominator. So the 12 divides by 3 to become 4, you don't divide the root 3. That was a lot to take in, so feel free to re-watch this part of the video. Many students find this bit particularly hard when they give us the side opposite the 60 degrees. I've just given you a tour de force of what to do, but you take your time to think about it. There's no shame in re-watching four or five times to make sure you get every single step right. There's a lot of steps there. But if x is 4 root 3, we can now fill in our box. x is 4 root 3, so that goes in the 30 degree column, and 2x will be 8 root 3. The question was, work out the value of y, and y is the hypotenuse opposite to the 90 degrees, so y would be 8 root 3, and that's the answer. I am not going to stop. Work out the perimeter of the triangle below. You can try to pause the video and work this one out yourself if you like. It's a great practice question. Or you can wait to see how I do it. Did you guess that I'm going to use the box? <laughs> That's probably not a surprise at this point. So it's a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So we're going to use our box, which we've memorized. 
The nine is opposite the 60 degrees, so we put that in the 60 degree column. That gives us an equation, which I've solved below. Nine equals x root three, divide both sides by root three, nine over root three equals x. Multiply top and bottom by root three, nine root three over three equals x, and nine divided by three is three. So three root three is x. You can see with practice, it actually doesn't become that hard. It gets easier and easier to complete. If we know x is 3 root 3, we can cheekily fill in the rest of our box. x is 3 root 3, 2x is 6 root 3. Now the perimeter, what does that mean again? All the way around the edge, so all the different sides of the triangle added up. 3 root 3 plus 9 plus 6 root 3. The 3 root 3 and the 6 root 3 add up to become 9 root 3. It's a bit like 3x plus 6x is 9x. 3 root 3 plus 6 root 3 is 9 root 3. Now the GRE or GMAT might write the answer as 9 plus 9 root 3, but they might also factorize. They might factor out the 9. Just quickly before I finish talking about factorizing though, many students would say to me, oh, don't the two 9s add up and it becomes 18 root 3? No, 9 is a separate number. It's like if you ask me what is 9 plus 9x, they don't combine together. They're two separate things. One's a number, one's a number attached to a letter. So the 9 and the 9 root 3 stay separate. Unless we of course factorize, which the tests might do, factoring out the 9, you would get 9 brackets 1 plus root 3. And that's the same thing as 9 plus 9 root 3. So either one of those two answers is how they could write the perimeter of this triangle. That was another tough one, so feel free to watch it several times. Time for the next fantabulous question. What is the area of the triangle below? Pause and try yourself, or wait for my explanation. Did I catch you? I'd be very interested to find out if I caught you. There was no 90 degrees on this one. Therefore, we don't know that it's a 30, 60, 90 triangle. We only have one of the angles, the 30 degrees. So we don't actually know either of the other two angles. Yes, the angle at A looks like a right angle, but in the GRE and GMAT and other tests, you can't assume that it's a right angle. So this question would actually be impossible. It'd be one of those that you'd have to click. This cannot be answered. Did I catch you? If I did, you can hang your head in shame. Just because it looks like a right angle doesn't mean it is a right angle. So this question is unsolvable. I told you I would throw one in there just to catch you, and I hope I caught loads of people. Anyway, time for the next question. What is the size of angle ABC? This one's an interesting one. I'm asking you for an angle, not asking you for a side. Many, many students don't actually know this that the 30, 60, 90 ratio applies if they give you the sides just as much as if they give you the angles. If they give you a right angle triangle where the hypotenuse is double as big as one of the sides, we know that that side must be the side corresponding to the 30 degrees. Just like in our box, the 30 degrees is x and the 90 degrees is 2x, here, the 8 must be opposite the 30 degrees and the 16 opposite the 90 degrees. This only applies specifically to right angle triangles, of course, but many students don't know that. If the hypotenuse is double one of the sides in a right angle triangle, we have ourselves a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And so we can say the 8 must be corresponding to the 30 degrees, it must be opposite the 30 degrees, so the angle at C is 30 degrees, leaving 60 degrees for the angle at B. So 60 degrees is the size of angle A, B, C. The rule works both ways, not just if they give you the angles, working out the sides, sometimes, and I've seen this in the test, if they give you the sides to work out the angles. Now for the culmination, the main event. This is the final question I'm going to do because the GMAT and GRE like to mix things up and mix in other topics. They usually won't just give you a simple triangle and say work it out, they like to mix things up, often involving circles. So if you want, 
pause the video and try this entire question yourself because it's a biggie. Points A, B and C are on the circumference of the circle below, center O. If the area of the circle is 64 pi and the angle BAC is 30 degrees as shown, what is the area of triangle ABC? To start with this question, we have to know a circle rule, which is that whenever the diameter of the triangle, to start answering this question, we need to know a particular triangle and circle rule. Whenever the diameter of a circle is the hypotenuse of a triangle, then the angle opposite to that diameter is 90 degrees. In other words, the angle at C looks like a right angle and is a right angle, 100% sure, because it's opposite to the diameter. And if that angle is 90 degrees from this bit of theory, we know the angle at B has to be 60 degrees. And therefore, what are we dealing with? A 30, 60, 90 triangle. But before we get to our magical box, what about this thing where they said the area of a circle is 64 pi? What's the formula for the area of a circle? The area is pi r squared. So we can come up with our own equation. They didn't tell us the formula equation, but we're gonna do it ourselves. They told us that the area of a circle is 64 pi, and we know the formula for the area of a circle is pi r squared. So we can write area equals pi r squared, 64 pi equals pi r squared. That's the equation that we can create. We can now, if you notice, solve this to find the radius and therefore find that entire diameter, the side opposite 90. You can almost predict the ending. If we've got the side opposite 90, we can fill in our box. Anyway, back to this equation. Dividing both sides by pi, we get 64 equals r squared, and square rooting that, r must equal eight. But if the radius equals eight, I've kind of given it away, how does that help us here? If the radius is eight, the diameter must equal 16. So the line AB, the diameter, must be 16, and that is opposite to the 90 degree angle. And therefore, as it's a 30, 60, 90 triangle, we can fill in our memorized box. 16 is the side opposite to the 90 degrees. So 16 equals 2x, x is eight, and we can fill in the rest of the box. The area in this case would be AC, times BC, they're the base and height, the two sides next to the 90 degrees, divided by two. Base times height divided by two. Eight times eight root three, divided by two. 64 root three divided by two. 32 root three is the area of the triangle. All down just to knowing the area of a circle and knowing our wonderful box. I hope you are now good friends with that box and have memorized it intimately and I hope you now enjoy 30, 60, 90 triangles as much as I do. Hope you liked the video. See you in the next one.